today we are going to discuss a very important topic that we uh, come across in every emergency duty that is snake bite and it is especially prevalent in our Gaya district where uh, people are um, from low socioeconomic profile and their homes is largely made of many a patient live in mud, uh, mud home and where they are more vulnerable to such types of um, happening. So it, is, it becomes very important that we, the treating clinicians, must be well aware of how to deal with the case of uh, snake, snake bite in emergency setup. And it, in fact, it is an emergency case. So emergency management management of snake bite. First of all, um, uh, we should uh, start with the a snake usually bites and um, many times people see it and uh, they know that they have been bitten by a snake. And one important point uh, to remember is that uh, all snake bites are painful. Uh, so let us outline the class of this. First of all, few points regarding, regarding bites snake bite, then we will be discussing about uh, symptoms, then about laboratory investigation, and then treatment. Treatment will be of two kinds, pharmacological, logical and non-pharmacological. Non For starting with the regarding bite that crack bite crack bite is pain so if a patient is complaining that I have been bitten by white some chalk, snake white uh, uh, I have been bitten by a snake and they have seen the snake and uh, the bite is painless then it might be that he or she has been bitten by crack. Right. And number two important point, 35 to 50 percent of snake bite are dry bites. What we mean by dry bite? That the snake at the time of biting the patient has not the sufficient quantity of venom in his venomous gland. So, 35, so in case any patient is very anxious and very apprehensive, we can tell them that even if the snake is poisonous, you should be relaxed because only 50% of the bites are true bite. Nearly 50% of the bites are dry bite. Just the hang has been... Uh, touched in the skin or even board therefore don't be worried be relaxed and uh, visible mark visible mark especially two visible mark two visible mark are seen in fiber fiber this is the Russell, Russell Viper. 
Russell fiber will give two distinct fang marks. Two distinct fang marks are seen in Russell fiber. Russell fiber snake fiber. So these are some of the important. And in case of crack, crack bite is paleness and it is also indistinct. 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 Means in case of crack bite, you cannot identify the fang marks. So there are two important points with the crack bite. It is paleness and the bite marks cannot be identified in case of crack. Now coming to the symptom. So first of all, we will be, there are two kinds of snakes, number one, kilapids, and number two, vipers, kilapids and vipers, kilapids okay. are neurotoxic, also called viperidae, vipers are also called viperidae. Their group is called Viperidae. Viperidae. These are vasculotoxic. Neurotoxic and vasculotoxic. So, what are the neurotoxic features? Because there are no clotting factors or clotting factor has been deficient. So, vasculotoxic snake causes conjunctive coagulopathy and that leads to hypofibrinogenemia. And that is the cause because due to the fibrin, clotting process starts in our body. Clotting process and uh, fibrinolysis, these, both, of, both of these processes go hand in hand in no, our normal physiological body. But where there is deficiency of fibrin, fibrin, the clotting process will be less. Mm -hmm. Therefore, patient develops bleeding. So, uh, to know the fibrinogenemia, we do serum fibrin. Serum fibrin, although there is coagulation profile, there is a term coagulation profile, but we should know specifically about serum fibrin. Serum fibrin, a split product, a split product, product. Then we do CBC complete blood count to know the thrombocytopenia. In case of snake bite, there is thrombocytopenia. You must look at these are the simple things which we can see in the emergency department that a patient of snake bite might be having thrombocytopenia. If you are looking that a patient is having thrombocytopenia, you should be alert that the patient is might having complications of bleeding. And in that case, the patient should be advised for uh, 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 your uh, uh, blood transfusion. 
है बिकॉज इन ब्लड ट्रांसफ्यूजन देर इज सफिशियंट अमाउंट ऑफ ऑल द क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स ऑल दो फाइब्रीन कॉन्सेंट्रेट्स और अदर थिंग्स आर नॉट इजली अवेलेबल बट होल ब्लड इज अवेलेबल विथ अस एवरी टाइम एंड इवन इफ यू आर हैविंग नीड फॉर क्लॉटिंग फ्रॉम क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स यू कैन गिव होल ब्लड बिकॉज दैट विल प्रोवाइड सम ऑफ द क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर्स एंड इट इज क्वाइट पॉसिबल दैट दैट स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ एडिशनल क्लॉटिंग फैक्टर विल हेल्प सॉल्व द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर पेशेंट बिकॉज पेशेंट इज नॉट हैविंग ए ब्लीडिंग प्रॉब्लम बिफोर हैंड दैट इज बिकॉज ऑफ द स्नेक बाइट एंड दैट माइट नॉट बी मच सीवियर so so even the whole blood providing whole blood will uh, will, will suffice your need of fibrin and fibrin split product then cbc and then that is protalidai polyvalent immune factor and uh, uh, there are few important points regarding this this is the main treatment that is anti venom is the main treatment main stay of the treatment and uh, we should know about what is polyvalent this polyvalent includes all the four big four there are four important snake uh, snake species like crab cobra viper and rajal's viper these are called big four and this takes care of big four because in emergency setup we don't know which uh, kind of snake has bitten and rest of the snakes are uh, not poisonous so there is no need to give them so whenever a case of snake bite comes we need to give anti venom against these four kind of snake, uh, snakes and that's why in uh, anti venom all the four species of snake bite mm -hmm. all the uh, uh, anti venom against all the four species four um, toxic species of snake is covered therefore it is of not much practical importance which kind of snake has come bitten many a time patient take a snap uh -huh. and although we should look that we should reward their uh, courage and their uh, dedication for the patient and that is good that is for our self awareness how how the what is the look of the patient and we should also learn uh, that this is a viper this is crab this is cobra but that is not of much much practical importance ultimately you have to give this anti venom and uh, few important point earlier there was a practice of giving uh, doing skin test but now it is these are this is not recommended even if the um, these are human derived uh, anti venom earlier there was use of equine derived uh, anti venom now it is even equine derived for even for equine derived uh, anti venom we don't need to give do a, a snake uh, skin, skin test. test so number one important point regarding anti venom is no need no need no need for a skin test a skin test this is very important because even if today i see many of the in dart uh, do this but that should not be the case no need for a skin test you go straight there but there is important point before a starting anti venom you have to give subcutaneous epinephrine epinephrine means adrenaline Sub subcutaneous epinephrine that is 0.25 mg 0.25 mg in one ampoule there is 1 mg so it is very difficult to take out one fourth of the uh, um, uh, of the of the ampoule in the syringe so what we uh, suggest to sister that she should give at least 0.5 ml 0.5 ml that is the can be done it 0.5 ml epinephrine subcutaneously this is a must because if you don't do you might land up in great trouble many times patient develop severe reactions mm -hmm. and anaphylactic reactions and in that case patient might uh, go into respiratory distress and you may lose your patient so always what not to do is no need for a skin test but there is need to this is a must this is a must you cannot avoid this you must do it subcutaneous epinephrine 0.5 ml before a start of before 
बिफोर एंटी वेनम बिफोर एंटी वेनम यू मस्ट डू सो फर्स्ट इन केस ऑफ स्नेक वाइट फर्स्ट ड्रग टू बी गिवन टू द पेशेंट इज 0.5 ml subcutaneous epinephrine then you will go for anti venom now the next question comes how much of anti venom what we do in emergency we give tail wise na yes so it is it is correct tail vial but this tail vial is actually 100 ml 100 ml anti venom tail vial all the tail vials are diluted in 10 ml and 10 vials in 10 ml becomes 100 ml and what we do uh, wrong or or uh, mistakenly do we give this much tail vial in 500 ml yes. and we run it over several hours That is not the case. Hundred ml has to be given in one hour. Since the vial of anti snake venom has already been diluted by ten ml of NS, there is no need to further dilute it. Just like ceftriaxone vial is there, and we dilute it and give it. So when the vial is in the powder form and it has already been uh, diluted uh, diluted in 10 and 10 ml ns and all the 10 and add ns because you have to give it over one hour when the patient develops um, a symptom uh, then you have you will have to give it within one hour and uh, one thing here comes the question so you have to give it in 10 100 ml in one hour so you should give it at at the rate of 30 drops per minute that will run in 50 minutes 30 drops per minute and now here comes the question of um, when to uh, start anti venom when to uh, start anti venom so the uh, important thing to remember is they are now the indications here comes the indications for anti venom you can group it as quaigulopathy why why guru why guru pathy when the patient is having quaigulopathy like bleeding bleeding from any of the source of the body like nasal bleeding like hematuria like uh, a chymotic patches on the skin then it becomes the indication for yes. taking cns symptoms cns symptoms like ptosis ophthalmoplegia uh, dysarthria dysphagia that is uh, drowsiness these are the indications for the asp asp yes now the respiratory 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 indications uh, paralysis of respiratory muscles leading to co2 retention that is the indication for uh, anti snake venom and uh, of course many times patients develop due to bleeding there might be the hypotension hypotension the patient of snake bite is uh, having bleeding and that leads to hypotension so this this has already been covered in quaigulopathy so these are the important indications the symptoms when the patient becomes symptomatic and uh, and now another is abdominal symptoms recurrent vomiting recurrent vomiting patient is not recurrent vomiting recurrent vomiting and pain abdomen so if you know the symptoms of the snake bite and patient becomes symptomatic in nutshell for all we will have to give the anti venom and just i have classified them that it can be a coagulopathic related cns symptoms like ptosis of thalmoplegia dysphagia dysarthria drowsiness respiratory indications will be respiratory muscle paralysis 
respiratory distress. In fact, that will be respiratory distress. Patient will be gasping, and his CO, uh, will become cyanose, and his CO2 is very high in ABG. Then that is respiratory indication. And abdominal indication is recurrent vomiting. Recurrent vomiting and pain abdomen. If you have given some patient uh, antivenom, and patient is still having uh, vomiting, still having uh, pain abdomen, in, even in case of snake bite, then you should give antivenom. And one very important thing uh, that this antivenom, 100 ml will be given over one hour, that means 30 drops per minute, that will, that will be covered in 50 minutes. One hour, fifty minutes, almost same. Uh, and if the patient is not going, uh, responding, then you may give repeat the dose of antivenom after one to two hours. After one to two hours, you can repeat it. In fact, ten one. Yes, same amount, and uh, it has not been given uh, in any way uh, where that for how many times you can repeat it. Simply it has been written in all the books that if the patient after giving antivenom is not responding, you can repeat the full dose after one to two hours. And it, it is my practical experience. There was one patient in uh, ICU which was already given 30 vial of uh, uh, antivenom and uh, still the patient was comatose. When I went to, to the ICU, I again uh, suggested her for 10 more vial and up in that very evening patient got conscious and after two, hour, uh, two days she was discharged. She was a 15 year old girl from a very poor background. He was uh, uh, beaten by a snake in his floor, he, erupting from his floor because that was a mud floor. So it happens. You might have to go for 50 vials, 60 vials at times. So there is no hesitation, but you should take at least one to two hours of gap just to uh, gauge the improvement. So this is the, the real thing. From now on, what we will do? Just 100 ml, 100 ml of anti um, snake venom. We will give it directly at the rate of 30 drops per hour because it becomes 10 ml becomes 100 ml. 100 ml is not a small amount, and you have. To you cannot give it for 4 or 5 hours, you have to give it very fast in one, one hour and you will have to repeat it after 1 to 2 hours. So this is the main stay of the treatment and before that you will have to give subcutaneous epinephrine. Apart from that, you will have to give other things like you may give, you may or may not give, that is not recommended. Tetanus immunization and painkiller. Painkiller. Painkiller like paracetamol and tramadol. PCM or tramadol. Tramadol. We will not give you antiplatelet kinds of thing uh, because that might promote bleeding because uh, snake white patients are already prone to bleeding. So PCM and tramadol, tetanus immunization, tetrac, tetrac can be given and there is no need of prophylactic antibiotics. So no need of septraxone. And uh, these are the pharmacological management. Now the non pharma logical management non pharmacological important one very important thing is ventilatory support then the patient is gasping and his co2 uh, pco2 is very high then it becomes the indication for ventilatory support so non pharmacological treatment it is ventilatory support. Ventilatory support. Number two, care of the wound. Care of wound. What we do? 
irrigation irrigation with normal salinity we should do care of the wound although we don't do but we should do it care of the wound irrigation with normal saline just uh, 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 standard wound care if there uh, standard wound care like we go for other antiseptic uh, like that so uh, irrigation with normal saline and uh, standard wound care so this is the this is our wound and one very important thing uh, there is no need for tourniquet ice ice bath or in, uh, alcohol many times people inject alcohol also so these practices are they have no scientific basis tourniquet ice bath and uh, incision Saxon. Hmm. These are the things which are practiced very commonly in the rural area. That is not recommended. And one very important precautionary things: if the patient is already uh, having tourniquet, then you cannot open it suddenly. You have to take proper resuscitation measure because it might happen that the, up till now the venom, although that is not the solution, that you have contained all the. you know below the site of uh, tunicate banding but it is quite possible when you open up the um, toxin will suddenly uh, flow in the rest of the body so you will have to take proper resuscitative measures resuscitative measures means you will you will have to be ready for ventilatory support uh, uh, oxygenation abg all that thing before opening the tunicate because you cannot uh, apply tunicate for very long because that, that will lead to the gangrene of the limb so you must have to open up but before opening up you should be ready that patient might deteriorate suddenly and you might need the ventilatory support so this is the uh, this is all about the uh, snake bite i think it was uh, quite useful for you and if you have any query you can ask me question Uh, regarding this management now we have we are going to discuss about management of neurotoxic features of snake so management of management of neurotoxic symptoms symptoms of snake bite Snake bite. There are two specific treatment for the neurotoxic features apart from anti-venom because anti-venom will be given in all kinds of snake bite. But when the patient develops neurotoxic features, which I have already enumerated, like ptosis, thalmoplegia, dysarthria, dysphagia, respiratory distress, and drowsiness, then this means the patient has developed neurotoxic features and for for neurotoxic features we give two important medications neostigmine neostigmine and number 2 atropine neostigmine is given in the dose of 0.5 to 2.5 mg One to three hour daily. Means, uh, point five mg one hour daily and maximum two point five mg three hour daily. So this is the dose range, and I will tell you what the practical approach can be in our setup. And if protein has to be given one mg, means one or uh, four to six hour daily. Four to six hour daily, and this is given. to counteract the muscarinic side effect of neostigmine so what and maximum maximum dose of neostigmine is 10 mg 
per 24 hours. So let me elaborate about neostigmine. Ten milligram per 24 hour. So one m full, one m full, m full of neostigmine consists of 2.5 mg. So, you can give 1 ampoule 3 hours because maximum dose will be given in maximum amount. So, you can safely give for 4 times. 1 ampoule, 1 ampoule neostigmine 3 hourly for 4 times. And uh, what I have said about it to be 1 ampoule 4 to 6 hour meal. So, since we are already given the higher side of dose, that is 2.5 mg, so duration might be increased a bit more. So, we can give 1 ampoule, 1 ampoule of 1 ampoule, ampoule neostigmine 4 hour meal, 4 hour meal, and 1 ampoule, 1 ampoule of atrophy 4 hour so it becomes very easy for the sisters our sisters also to give it uh, together at the same time because uh, we should not allow uh, uh, to give new statement at 3 hours and uh, let it happen uh, let it give the opportunity to give the muscarinic side effects and then we give atrophy to, uh, to it the better uh, choice will be to give them 4 hourly, a 1 ampoule uh, neostigmine 4 hourly and 1 ampoule atrophy 4 hourly and that, that will be convenient for, uh, for sisters or our staff to give it and all that we have to take care that only for 4 times, 4 times. Yes, sir, do not accept this. Yes, do not accept. 3 times duration rata hai yahan jo hai in usual practice shayad ek 5 minutes pa 1 hour le 3 hour le shayad yahan to there are this is what is written in book achha, achha, achha. this is documented and i have simplified a bit just because at 2 hour 2 am in the night or 3 am in the night sister is not going to go for neostigmine at 3 hour and 4 hourly for a protein. She will go and it will it becomes very easy for her to go and give both of them simultaneously. Then he, so what we prescribe and it is also the duty of treating clinician that he should ensure the compliance of his direction. He should not give such a direction that, that cannot be followed. Therefore, I have simplified Although many times patient people will say that uh, this much of high dose of uh, neostigmine uh, might create problem, but that not happens. In fact, if you give 0.5 uh, mg of neostigmine 3 hourly or 4 hourly, patient might not respond. Therefore, or if, or if, if you are not so